What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Brandon's Face. It's the podcast about a playlist. I'm Jonathan Beardsley. And I am Brandon May. Thanks for joining us. We have another stacked show for you this week. We'll be talking about new albums from Caliuchis, Masego, Can't Swim, and Hawken. But before we do that, we're going to run through some of the more interesting singles and EPs that came out. If you like what you hear, please like, follow, and subscribe. Anything you want to talk about before we dive in this week? No, I think I'm good, man. We've got a lot of content to get through, so. We do. Let's start off with this week's first song, which is Scenery by Bearings. I really enjoyed this one, man. It's been a while since we've heard something that wasn't attached to their last album. I think all of the releases we've covered since we started talking about them ended up being attached to a deluxe edition. This feels like the first song in a new era, and I think it's what pop punk should be, man. It's fun, catchy, to the point. What were your thoughts on it? Yeah, a fantastic pop punk, man. Power chords galore. Can't hate on it. Really <laughs> liked it. Exactly. When in doubt, just play more power chords, right? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, moving on. We got a new one from Hawthorne Heights called Lucerne Valley. Talk to me about this one. You know, man, Hawthorne Heights is one of those bands that never really got like the actual recognition that they deserved. Um, they've put out like a number of really good albums yet everyone only really knows them for uh ohio is for lovers and like if 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 you're lucky you'll get somebody that's like yeah man nikki fm is really good uh this track is great man i'm glad to see him back uh i'm excited to see if this turns into something bigger i agree they never really did crack that upper echelon they were always kind of an emo novelty act right and i agree man they had some really good albums um obviously this one if you were around back then wouldn't be surprising to hear but if you were lonely was probably a better album than the silence in black and white was although it doesn't have the standouts uh in terms of this song though man they're a band i want zero growth out of when i hit play (laughs) on a hawthorne heights song i want it to sound like hawthorne heights right the song accomplished that so job well done i like it great great clean vocals terrible scream vocals and that's exactly what we want to hear (laughs) yeah there you go there it is that's it right there (laughs) i do that at least 10 times a day to myself (laughs) well that's how that's how most people should wake up get your coffee take a sip of water and just wow oh god i agree um all right man let's move on to this new one from under oath called let go i'm pretty sure the first three tracks this week are all pre-tour singles that i don't know if they have anything to do with upcoming albums but Just one-offs. they they might be we'll see time will tell but i think all three have been just as good as the album singles that we've covered from these bands in recent years right this track still feels kind of like it's part of the voyeurist era to me it's a tiny bit more technical and melodic but sonically still pretty much the same i enjoyed it though what would you think about it yeah i love this this band has been busy bro voyeurist was such a good album it got a little bit of hate here and there but overall i think this album i think that album did was it? fucking awesome i remember yeah. on reddit people were saying it was one of their favorite <laughs> metal albums of the year but it's funny. i didn't see the other side of that discussion. yeah it's funny because every everybody who hated it got hated on but there was there were quite a few people who were like it's not to find the great line so fuck it but like it's it was a really good album man um nothing's to find the great line that's right oh my God, i know, that's, I know. So stupid. <laughs> that's so stupid <laughs> yeah I, I this this probably is more of a one-off i doubt that it's for another album but if it is let's fucking go uh yeah, the, 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 those are my thoughts. Yeah, and if you're a fan of them, if you haven't seen them on tour and they're on your band bucket list, definitely check them out. They are very much worth seeing live. Right. Uh, let's move on to this new one from Beverly Kills called Melatonin. What are your thoughts on it? Yeah, uh, like all of their tracks, I fucking love this, man. The great bass line, great use of synths, great guitar work, vocals are awesome. I I love this, man. And in fact, there was uh, my one complaint with their album last year was that I, and not even a complaint, I, I think I just like for growth purposes thought that there could be some like variations in like the vocal pitching and she sure. did it <laughs> on, on this track. So this is a good one, man. Yeah, man, I agree. It's it's energetic. It's edgy punk with kind of an art rock approach. I, I really enjoyed this one as well. Yep. Yeah, thank you for turning me on to them. Um, All right, let's move on to this new one from Boy Genius, Not Strong Enough. 
I enjoyed this one. I think all four of their new tracks have been pretty damn good. They're really starting to grow on me, which is probably making you happy. Uh, I, I, we'll see I, how I, this new album sounds, but I'm enjoying it, man. I got a big old shit eating green grin right now. Yeah, uh, I'm sure you do. <laughs> the first like 30 seconds. So I, I wrote my notes out as I was listening to the song and my notes are, this sounds just like a Phoebe Bridgers track. Oh, there, there's Lucy and Julian. Yep. Um, as a as a fan of all of these artists, I'm really super impressed how they all are like blending together so well. This is a good track, and I am most definitely interested in hearing the project in full. Same. You gonna get that final? Uh, I'll wait for the album. Time will tell. Things are expensive now, bro. They are. They are. Um, I just bought a few. We'll talk about one later on in this episode. <laughs> uh, let's move on to this new one from Jug drug church called myopic how are you feeling about it heavy riffage solid baseline their their spotify description is actually pretty apt for them too heavy for the pop crowd and too poppy for the heavy crowd i think it's fucking great man i uh i think this is a one-off single i doubt it's the start of a new rollout because they just put out an album last year i'm really enjoying their their la their album from last year hygiene still and this was it was cool mm -hmm. to see them see them pop up on my releases what did you think about it yeah, I agree. It, it kind of sounds like early 2000s alternative with a little sharper edge to it. It's a little bit heavier, a little more chaotic, but I thought it worked. This is a good song. Sweet. Uh, let's move on to this new one from Unearth called Mother Betrayal. I, I really enjoyed this one. I just wish they would have stretched it out a little bit to let some of these sections <laughs> breathe and grow because I was really, really into them and felt like the conclusion to this song came a little too soon, but I really enjoyed it. How'd you feel about it? Mother betrayal. Mother of God. This record is going to be fucking good, <laughs> man. Uh, they have put a lot of love into these singles and you can really tell that like mellow death riff towards like the middle let, let, or like towards like three quarters of the way in, like you said. Yeah. I really wish they let that breathe a little bit, but um, Unearth has done a really good job of like blending metal and hardcore. Like, like that that is just what they do. Mm -hmm. um, and the hardcore part of them is probably like yeah, the, the song being three minutes is long enough, uh, you know. So uh, I'm actually getting pretty Fair. excited for this for this album, man. Yeah, that one. Let's see. I added it to our release calendar. The new one from Unearth. I think we still have a while before it drops. I think May it's May. 5th. Yeah. Yeah, May 5th. Um, all right, man. Talk to me about this next one you threw on here. It's from a group called Devangelic. The song is <laughs> <laughs> You Dug Hole Incantation. I'm hey, say. I like that. I like that. Sure. I'm, Tell I'm, me about it. I'm sure. I'm sure our accents are off here a little bit. Yes. I, I doubt. I doubt that's English. But uh, yeah, man, I I found this band uh, uh, like a month or two ago, and I've been listening to them here and there, and I uh, saw they released a new song, and I was like, there you go, just some good old fashioned death metal, you know, a la early death and early '90s Cannibal Corpse. I I I really like it, man. Album uh, single art is fucking neat too. I'll, I'll agree with you on that. Uh, you know I'm not really into this one, but I love I hearing your thoughts on these types of bands and putting a little spotlight on them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, man. Let's move on to this new one you threw on from Cradle of Filth called She Is a Fire. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. I was not <laughs> expecting you to add a Cradle of Filth song. So I, I've just never personally been into their music. It's not it's not even the presentation over the top over the top aesthetics, corpse paint. Those those things don't throw me off. I just really don't like Danny's vocals that much. I never really? have. The music is fine. It's just not for me. I'm right. not I'm sure the song was okay if you're into them. So you sound like you're into them a little bit. Did you enjoy this? Um Look, look, uh, that 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 that's a, that's a question. I did enjoy the song, but uh, some have said, and even I have said this a few times, that Cradle of Filth has lost their touch uh, after their 2006 release of Nymphetamine, which I I did like. Um, I think that this track is really good, though. I think Danny sounds the same, uh, and that is, it, it, I, I know you don't like his vocals, but you got to be impressed that he can still do that after 30 fucking years. Um, sure. yeah. <laughs> uh, I had, I was super into death metal when I was a freshman in, in high school. And I had a, I had a friend, John, who, um, 
who was super into Cradle of Filth. And so I was super into Cannibal Corpse. He was super into Cradle of Filth. And we would bring our CD cases and we would trade CDs every so often. Um, so I could, so we could both get a little bit of change of pace throughout the day. He had literally every album. It was actually pretty impressive. Um, and I, I grew, I really grew to love them, man. Their 1998 album, Cruelty and the Beast, is really fucking cool. Um, Midian is a good album. I, I, I do like them, but I can totally understand how anybody could be turned off by how different Danny's vocals are. So I think they also announced a new album. So maybe sure it'll did. grow on me. We'll see when it drops. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about this new one from Metallica called If Darkness Had a Son. What are your thoughts on it? All right. I'm going to let you eight mile me here for a second. What's my one complaint with this song? The kick drum, the double bass. For the fucking drumming, man. Oh my God. Just fire <laughs> Lars already and bill him as a producer so he still gets paid. This is borderline <laughs> embarrassing, bro. I actually read an article this week. Um, Gojira's drummer, Mario Duplantier, defends Lars's drumming. But, like, not the actual drumming, just the fact that he's important in the foundations of metal and that he's old and still doing it. Look, man, this track had so much potential, but it's so hard for me to listen to it with the drums, even like in the parts where he's hitting the bass drums with like sticks, because clearly he's not using his double kick. Uh, it like feels off timed. I don't know, man. We'll see how the album turns out. But it's, it's so hard because everything else is everything else in the song is good. But like, fuck, man. No, no. Everything else in the song is not good. The vocals are not good. I think well, James is not sounding great. I mean, him and him and him and Dave Mustaine were pretty good friends, bro. Mustaine wrote most of their '80s stuff, so if uh, Megadeth's vocals and uh, I think he uh, sounds a little better than Mustaine, but his style also will age a little bit better than Mustaine's did. Yeah. It, I don't know, man. I didn't enjoy this one. I haven't been big on the singles. We'll we'll see with with this album when it drops. <laughs> we sure will, man. Lars is pretty good in getting him to the Greek, though. Never saw that movie. What? I never saw it. Aren't you a Forgetting Sarah Marshall fan? I love that movie. You, <laughs> Whatever the equivalent of your Listen To Next playlist is on uh, on Spotify for movies, throw that one on yours oh, immediately. Man. I feel like everybody's seen that movie, and I haven't. Um, yeah, Forgetting Sarah Marshall is a great movie, though, dude. Yeah, exactly. I Why know, would it's, you it's... not want to spend more time in that universe? <laughs> oh, man. All right, uh, let's move on to this new one from Fontaine's DC, the cello song. How are you feeling about it? Uh, I, I, do you think we'll get another album? I doubt it, but I, I no, bet, I don't. I bet this is a, just a little victory lap from Fontaine's DC after putting out a fucking banger last year. I love this track, obviously, as cellos and string instruments are my fucking jam. Um, I, I, I really liked it. Did you like it? I like the cellos. I like the strings. A little bit too much tambourine in this one for me, though. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, all right, let's talk about this new one from Portugal. The man, dummy. Uh, Kyle from Party Down and his band Karma Rocket may have invented alternative indie, but Portugal <laughs> the man has perfected it, man. This is excellent. Really enjoying oh it. Oh my god. How are you uh, feeling about it? Can you imagine a Portugal the man and Karma Rocket tour? Uh, I can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> Holy shit, man. We have a new Portugal the man album on the way. Mm -hmm. uh, this is this is big for me. I'm a huge fan of this band. Uh, this isn't the best that I've ever heard them at. But again, I actually still think Feel It Still, which was the lead single from their last album, Woodstock, back in 2017, is the worst song on that album. So we'll see. Uh, this is, of course, catchy, and it's very much them. But I, I think I think they're putting some poppy singles out, and then they're gonna they're gonna bury me in deep cuts, just like they did with Woodstock. We will see. Their new album, Chris Black, Changed My Life, comes out June 23rd. I will throw in the show notes. Uh, they have their entire Lollapalooza 2018 uh, set up on YouTube. Uh, if anybody is curious about what they do live, it is very rock and roll. They open with a Beavis and Butthead like actual cartoon written for Portugal the Man and then it goes right into a Metallica cover. And it's actually pretty sick. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> 
I love Beavis and Butthead. Were you big on them? Uh, yes and no. I mean, I, I never, I never like, I never sought them out. But when they were on, I never turned it off. Dude, they are still excellent. He's, he, <laughs> Mike Judge is still making new seasons of is it he occasionally. Really? Yeah, he made a new one, I think, for Paramount or a new movie. Excellent. All of it's good. Still does the music videos, but to newer stuff, obviously. That's funny. You never saw any of the newer stuff when it came back? No, I haven't watched that since. Oh my god, like... dude. They watch they watch the scary monster Skrillex video and it's like the kid <laughs> like, you know, messing the dude up. And I forget, I think Butthead's like commentating on it. He's like, I never should have sent that kid to Hogwarts. <laughs> <laughs> it fucking kills me every time, dude. Oh, that's funny. Okay. That's I'm funny. going to send you those DVDs, even though I know you can just look those episodes up pretty easily. Mail them to me, bro. I will. Uh, let's move on to this new one from Hot Chip and Brian Eno called Got It, or Brian Eno and Goddess called Blind in the Sand. You're an Eno fan. Talk to me about this. Uh, you know, just Brian Eno, the the legend, working with Hot Chip. Uh, this mm-hmm. track is fucking great, man. I I, I really dig it. I don't really have other many other notes besides yeah this is really tight. Yeah, it's it's kind of weird hearing new music that sounds like it's from the late 60s, but <laughs> I'm not mad at it, man. I like this track. No, I'm not mad at that at all. Uh let's move on to this one you threw on here from Surprise Chef called Rosemary Hill. A little jazzy, little jazzy tune you threw on here as a curveball. I enjoyed it. What are your thoughts on it? Good. I'm glad you enjoyed it, man. Uh, I actually didn't hear about this band until like earlier this year. Uh, I hit follow on them after listening to a few of their tracks, and I think they have a very interesting sound about them. I dig it. Um, I'm glad. I'm glad that you like it. Yeah, I'd love to hear King Cruel riff on this. That would oh, be yeah, excellent. That'd be neat. Um. All right. Let's move into the R and B realm of things briefly. We got a new one from Black. This is the title track off of his upcoming album, Since I Have a Lover. I wasn't really expecting him to trade in his trap aesthetics for a more broadly focused R&B sound that lends leans more into the pop category, but I'm not really mad at it, and I'm not entirely surprised, I guess. He's done songs with Khalid in the past, and this reminds me very much of a song Khalid would do. I think Black pulls it off just as well as Khalid would and has managed to make his absence and return more interesting by dropping something so different than his other stuff. I enjoyed this. I think he's dropping another new song tonight. We'll see how that is, if it varies the tone or vibe at all. But I like where this is going. What about you? All right. So every time this track came on, I actually had to look at my phone and be like, who the fuck is this, man? This is this track is <laughs> excellent. And guitar loops and Six Lacks voice just sound so good together. And I really hope that this is the direction in general he's going to take for his album because I really liked this. This was really neat, man. Uh, we should throw the music video to that in the show notes. You should check it out if you haven't. It's pretty cool. Yeah, let's do that. Um, all right, let's move on to a new one from They and Young Blue called In the Mood. I'm a big fan of the hook on this one. I don't really love the guest verse, but it is what it is. I'm excited to hear their new album, New Moon, next month. What are your thoughts on this one? My notes are, this is all right, man. Great hook. I'm excited for the album. Yep. Good. I'm a, you're, you're a big fan of they as well, so yeah, that should I like be them. fun for us to break down. You like them, yes. I like them, they. I like I like they. <laughs> oh, man. They put themselves in this situation, you know? <laughs> exactly. We didn't pick the name. <laughs> uh, all right, man. Very interested on your thoughts on this next one. It's a new one from J-Hope and J-Cold. J-Cole called On the Street. I think I sent you pictures around Lollapalooza when they met each other last year. I wasn't really expecting a collaboration between them so soon. I don't know how well their styles mesh together, but both deliver enjoyable verses over a nice, if not slightly generic, uplifting beat. How'd you feel about this one, though? So uh, from what I've heard, this is kind of a dream collaboration for Mr. J-Hope. I think they sound great on the same track together, man. And J. Cole features are sometimes hit or miss for me, like we've talked about a dozen times on the podcast. But I really did like this one. I have a major issue with the music video on this one, which I don't know if you've seen. I so have not. they're each kind of doing their thing. I think like J. Cole is on a, a rooftop for his verse and J. Hope's just like walking through the city, right? And then at the very end after J. Cole's verse, they like are on the same roof and like shake hands. 
if you got them together for the music video, why did you only have them together for three <laughs> seconds at the end of it? It makes no sense to me, like, at all. But, all right, maybe they had an artistic vision in mind for it. Um, all right, let's move on to this new one from Gus Dapperton called Horizons. I don't really know if I've ever heard a voice quite like his, man. The last few singles he's dropped have been great. Very excited to hear what's next. It feels like we're part in in the middle of an album rollout right now, but we don't really have much information on said album. How'd you feel about this track? And are you excited for a new album from him? Uh, Yeah, man, this is poppy and catchy as hell. This is great. Uh, I love the, like, the layered vocals effect mm-hmm. that he did. I don't know if he just recorded himself twice or if that's like a like an echo loop or something, but I really like this. Glad to hear there's an album coming. I'm excited for it. Let, let's go. Yeah, very different. Very neat. Um, let's move on to this new one from Arlo Parks called Impurities. It's got a little bit of a different vibe than her last single, but I liked it. Um, I'm not sure if this one raised my interest in her new album, but I do remain curious about it. What about you? That's kind of where I'm at. I'm not like excited or, or like, like I'm curious. Uh, this was okay. It's not, it's not super my jam, but I'm, I don't, I didn't dislike it, you know? Yeah. She's a talented singer with the potential to deliver a great song or album, but this one just didn't really do it for me in that regard. Decent for sure. Though. All right, man, let's move into the EDM realm of things, our favorite. This is <laughs> the first one up is AC Slater's Good Love. You know, I'm always in the mood for a fun piano house track. This is exactly <laughs> that. Love it. How are you feeling about it? Is piano house coming back? Did it ever leave? Uh, it did yeah. leave. And yes, it is coming back. <laughs> AC Slater at it again, man. I've really liked all of his night bass stuff and um when that when his track bass inside came out man i could i just didn't stop listening to it that year so um I'm, i think i'm always gonna be a big fan of ac slater and this is this is a good track man same i agree uh let's talk about this new one from john summit and Hala called where you are it could be that he used the same vocalist as K5 did on Escape or that he did an official remix of that song, but I really do feel like he's becoming one of the better heirs to that specific house throne that Cascade and Dead Mouse have held for so long. This doesn't surpass anything they've done, but the fact that it's in the same class is crazy. And now the fact that he's doing a back-to-back set with Cascade to headline a festival only lends itself more to this. What are your thoughts on this? Do you think he's approaching that top level, at least musically, not necessarily in terms of a following yet? <laughs> Man, I, I actually kind of feel like an idiot, dude, because every time this track came on, I was like, I didn't know K5 dropped a new track this this week, and they didn't, but uh, we got Hala. That That's why it sounded so familiar. Yeah. Um, wow, yeah. Um, you Look, man, I've never been like a huge John Summit fan, but he's really blowing up right now, and I saw that he's doing that back-to-back with Cascade. I think it's at Hard, right? Um, yes. Which uh, is going to be held at the Coliseum. Ew. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not really too sure how to feel about that, but that lineup is wild. Uh, yeah, the, it's it, this is a good song. Uh, I, the Coliseum, Jesus Christ. I can't believe they're doing shows there again, man. It's weird. Like I know K5 played there and it sounds like everything went well. The video you sent me from that performance was very, very cool, but it is very surreal that like after what EDC 2010 or 11, it was barren for 10 plus years. Well, I think that was the year that A, they rest the gates, and B, that one 15 year old who snuck in. Oh, died. it was. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, that all of that happened. Yeah, I was there. It was horrible, but like, and it was a breakdown in just society on the <laughs> floor of that Coliseum, dude. It was gross, but um, I'm glad that they're at least running shows out of there. It's a historic venue. It's cool that artists can perform there. I just hope that they're managing it well. Well, and I think Insomniac has come a long way. Back then, it was it was let's let's buy the best shittiest uh, speakers and production equipment and uh, hire some carnies to run the to run these carnival rides and see what happens. You know, that was still that was still like the earlier days of what EDC is becoming now or has mm-hmm. already become. It wasn't uh, as, as 
it was iconic in the rave scene, but it, normies didn't know about it. You, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, uh, Insomniac has come a long way now. Um, they have street teams now to go make sure everybody's safe. Uh, in fact, it was after that incident because I went to Audio Autistic in 2011 and I was very sober and uh, I was watching DJ Craze and just kind of kneeled down to take a break because it was it had just been like a long night and the street team came up to me. They were like, Hey man, are you okay? Like if, if you're on drugs, it's okay. We're not cops. And I was like, I'm sober, bro. I'm just trying to enjoy this set, man. He's about, he's about to drop dirt off your shoulder. Um, so, but yeah, I, I think it's Omniacs come a long way. And I think that they will probably do the Coliseum justice now, which is pretty cool that they're going to use the hard, um, the hard, uh, format that they purchased from Destructo, uh, to do that, so because the EDC would never fit That's there cool. now, but it's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, learn from history. That's smart. I'm glad that the company seems to be in a better place now. You got to learn from your mistakes. You're right; they were in a very reckless and like there was just so much money coming in so fast into a genre that it was not previously, and things were a little unregulated and crazy. And yeah, unfortunately, that happened and shows went away for the most part. Didn't Hudson and Gotham shut down, too? Uh, yeah, they shut down pretty shortly after that, man. Yeah, it was it was a wild time. The last time I was at the Hudson Gotham was with you, and I'm pretty sure that was 2010. So, yeah, was that um, Felguck and, and Crispy? Crispy? Yep. Yep. That's a fitting last yeah, right. It's in Gotham show if I've ever heard of one. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. You saying the fucking street team thing reminded me of this, the get up and dance crew. Do you remember them? Oh, my God. Yeah. Fucking annoying assholes. <laughs> Just let me sit, dude. I paid a lot for my ticket. <laughs> right. Exactly. Oh, my God. All right. Let's move on. We got a new one from Sonny Fodera, Lewis Thompson, and Morgan called Shadow. Fodera only makes bangers. This is exactly that. You feeling the same? Yeah, man, absolutely. And Fodera is actually also on the hard lineup, so good for good, good for him. I saw that. Yeah, I would definitely be checking that out if I were going. Mm-hmm. Uh, next up, we got a new one from ATB Ara and York called Highs and Lows. How you feeling about it? We have a new one from ATB. I was like, yeah. I when I saw this on my release ca- on my releases, I was like, wait, what the fuck uh yeah man this is great i love this good good song i was very very shocked as well when i was like atb what the fuck i did a hard double take i was like am i tired <laughs> like yeah, this is really good a lot of quality edm this week yes um, sir next up we got a new one from matt lange and denny's dennis is it dennis reno when it's with a z i'm gonna say De- dennis okay um and the song's called nowhere else how are you feeling about it for i need to know are you over your traumatic experience of the last album yeah yeah out? okay good yeah let's i liked this track i thought it was good it wasn't quite as heavy as the other stuff that he's ever put out but i think that's probably because of dennis denise whatever you want to say and uh, i liked it yeah i thought it was interesting i thought it was good i'm definitely past the last album <laughs> <laughs> um, I I just didn't enjoy the rollout. The album itself didn't bug me that much. I thought it was very good. Um, moving on to this new one from Elenium called American Teeth, or Elenium and American Teeth called Insanity. I personally, I thought this one was a bland instrumental, weak vocals, dumb lyrics. Just could not enjoy this one, and that's sad because I really, really liked their last single. Did you feel differently than I did about this one? It, this is very pretty, but and I do love the way he uses guitars uh, in his music, but you're right. It's bland, and it's just really – this is like the height of EDM cheese, bro. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's chain smokers-esque. Oh, oh yeah. This Different, is, this is, but yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, well do, we have a new Elenium album coming out soon, don't we? Yeah, yeah, we do. I think it's his fifth album. It's a self-titled, and that one is dropping April 28th. Nice. Uh, next up, we got a DJ Tennis remix of a song called No Words by Pale Blue. How you feeling about it? Yep, DJ Tennis fucking rules. Yep. 
<laughs> him and Rodriguez Jr. are almost weekly fixtures on our podcast and have never missed. You can probably just <laughs> copy and paste whatever I've said about their last release right. or for this part. They always deliver at the highest level possible. This is no different. Right. Uh, next up, we got a new one from Teed. This is the extended mix of Regulate featuring Red Light. How'd you feel about this new mix? Totally enormous extinct dinosaurs. Extended mix. What's what's not to like, man? This is great. Baseline infectious as hell. Great, great track. Yeah, it's it's primitive, but it's fun. It it opens with the boots and cats beat and doesn't offer a ton of surprises from there, but it's also really good. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, next up, we got a new one from Danger called Cosmic Cruise. The last two Danger songs we've covered have been fucking great. Something about the sounds he uses and how crushing the low end is just keeps me coming back. I thought this track was excellent. What about you? Um, I actually think that it – I actually disagree with you on this one, man. I think that it's okay. Uh, it's it's – let, let me frame this. This is a very good track in general. For danger, I think it's a little weak. I think the low end is the best part of this song. Is the best part of this one? And no, no, that's that like deteriorating eight bit synth or whatever it is. I love that. I maybe don't maybe I'll go back to it. Maybe I'll go back Man, to it. But I, I I I I like a lot of other danger tracks better than I like this one. Okay. Fair, fair. Definitely go back to it at least once though. Okay. Uh, next up we got. A new one from Ryan James Ford. It says Eggplant Stretched. This is this is what hold music should sound like in the metaverse. <laughs> I don't know why Please. you would need to put somebody on hold in the metaverse, but if you need to, this is what they should hear. I, I enjoyed this one. What did you think about it? Uh, I really liked it, man. This was uh, my favorite of the Ryan James Ford uh, releases. It really He released an EP or whatever you want to call it of a few tracks. Um and they're all they're all pretty neat, but I th- 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 this was my favorite of them. Um, yeah, I think this is just proper fucking techno, man. This is this is legit. Hard agree. Um, next up, we got a new one from Rico and Surgeon called "Gangster in Disguise." This one sounds like a Tesla coil gone awry with a beat behind it, but I enjoyed it. How'd you feel about it? Speaking of proper techno, Surgeon has just been on a on a roll this year. Uh, yes. Yeah, this track is excellent, man. I really liked it. Uh, next up, we got two new tracks from Georgia and Angel- Angelui and Julie and Rodriguez Jr. These tracks are called "Tuning the Moon" and "Your Dark Dreams." And as I said, you can just copy and paste everything I said about <laughs> DJ Tennis right here. Any specific thoughts on these ones other than they're great? Just, just. Gorgeous melodic house music, man. Yep, it's Agreed. just it's just gorgeous. All right, let's end the singles. This one on kind of an interesting one. This is a uh, this is from an artist called Violet Cold. The song's called Neold. I don't know really how to review ambient music <laughs> like this, so I'm just considering this kind of a transition to our EP section this week. Any uh, thoughts on this one or this artist? Yeah, it's kind of like an interlude in the playlist, right? Uh, yeah, so yeah. Violet Cold is like a post-rock kind of slash ambient sort of thing. Think like Mogwai, but like less Mogwai. Sure. Um, but this is like a pure ambient track, so I liked it. I added it blind, but I ended up I ended up liking it. It's hard to review ambient music. You either dig it or you don't, so this might might even fall into like IDM or something like that. I don't know. Whatever. That's the genre. It is. What does that stand for? Intelligent dance music, bro. <laughs> what the fuck? Intelligent. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. That's like a whole thing. That's what people classify oh Aphex Twin and like Boards of Canada as. It's oh. all. It's all. It's all music, bro. It's all. It, I mean, I love Aphex Twin, but. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to spin off the rails if I think about that too much. Uh, Let's move on to the EPs. We got, first up, a new one from Ignez and Rodad called Vermilion. I know you're very excited about this one. Talk to me about it. This goes fucking hard, bro. It really does. Especially Vermilion 2. Just, God, man, that bass line is insane. Um, I loved all four of these. This This is heavy. This is techno. This is some shit you'd hear at Burgine for sure. Yeah, it literally sounds like a power plant on the verge of a Chernobyl-style meltdown. <laughs> right, like... 
Yeah, man, I really enjoyed this one. I knew it was going to be super dark when I saw Rodad on it. It's very dark, super dissonant. I really enjoyed it. Yep. Um, Next up, we got Shower Beer's debut EP, The Pre-Game Properly. We covered three of the four songs on this as singles, and we really enjoyed them all. The new track, I'm Sober, is excellent and a fun way to end the EP. They're four for four to start, and this release is the first chapter in what I hope is many for a band that we'll be talking about years from now. What did you think of their first official release? Yeah, man, I, again, we've heard the majority of this already. We covered this EP's rollout, and I just have to say this band slash dude or whatever just fucking kills it. The guitars remind me of old Newfound Glory. The drums remind me of, like, Better Luck Next Time. Do you ever Did you ever listen to that band? I did a little bit, yes. Uh, the, well, the drums reminded me of it and actually took me back to, to listen to one of their albums this week. Oh. Uh, the lyrics truly are perfect for a pregame. I love this. Keep making music shower beers. Yes, never stop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, let's move on to this new one you threw on from Camp Ghost called Blue Light. Tell me your thoughts on it. Well, you know, man, I wanted to throw some acoustic emo on here because we haven't heard sure. much of it this year. And sure. I think Camp Ghost is good. I think the CP is good. I think it's perfect for winding down from a hard day, which I have had plenty of this week. So uh, I like this one. What did you think about it? I thought it was good. It's a quality EP from start to finish. Very raw, very emotive. I'd love to hear how this sound would play out over the course of a full length album because 11 minutes wasn't really enough for me but right. i did enjoy what i heard <laughs> nice um you ready to move on to the albums this week we've got some albums this week john are you ready we do have some albums buddy yes i am very ready because Good. first up we have caliuchis's new album red moon and venus and buddy this is one of the easiest tens i have ever given <laughs> i hit play on this album <laughs> within seconds of it dropping and was fully engaged with it until the end enjoying every single second along the way i've run it back every day since and it hits like the first time every time i listen to it her voice is enchanting the features from omar and summer walker are incredible the production feels tailor-made for her but it's her voice being at the front and center for nearly 43 minutes of this album and carrying it with fucking ease that makes it as special as it is. It's inviting, it's luxurious, sultry, it's endlessly captivating. In terms of a standout, you could throw a dart at the track list, and I probably <laughs> wouldn't argue with whatever it lands on. But if I had to pick one, I'll say All Mine, because that's the one I go back to the most. And that was the song that was playing when I realized that this one was going to be a 10. Uh, yeah, man, I fucking love this one. Where did it land with you? I am so glad you loved it, man. I'm glad it lived up to all the expectations that you had for it. Uh, look, man, I think Callie just fucking killed it on this one. I think the singles were great during the rollout, and somehow they even sound better in the context of an album. Uh, the songwriting is just fantastic. Thematically, I think you know that I love a good, wholesome album about rejecting toxicity in your life and embracing positivity. Uh, mm -hmm. I have to admit, I really like this album, but for some reason, that is inexplicable. It could be the week I had or whatever, but I had trouble staying engaged with it this week. Um, but what I did end up doing is I, I split it into three parts and listened to a part every time I wanted to listen to it. And uh, that worked and it didn't take for my enjoyment of it. I really liked it. I'm going to be continuing to revisit this one throughout the year. It's clearly a solid record, man. My standout was endlessly. I gave it an eight out of 10. What three parts did you break it up into? How did you do that? Um, I did in my garden through all mine and then fantasy through endlessly and then moral conscious through happy now. That's the proper way to do it. Yeah. It's the, it's the, <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed this one, it, man. It, it was the way that made the most sense to me. So Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's I think that's correct. I'm glad you enjoyed it, man. Yeah, I I really liked it. Uh so you ordered you ordered this one on, on physical media. Yes, I did. So my wife wanted a shirt of hers. I ended up ordering the red vinyl. It felt appropriate for this and was only $3 more than the black vinyl. There you very, go. very, very excited to get that one. I'll definitely send you some photos of it once it arrives. And knowing you, uh, those photos will be beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, all right, man. Let's talk about this new one from Masego. It's a self-titled album. Uh, I... I thought this one was really good, 
but I thought at times it leaned a little too heavily on interpolation instead of its own ideas. Some of them worked for me, some of them didn't. I really liked the incorporation of the cha-cha slide in the album opener, <laughs> but was a little less enthusiastic about what you want to try being built around the hook to What's Your Flavor by Craig David. Musically, <laughs> this album is beautiful. He's perfected this blend of moody jazz and contemporary R&B. But some of his lyrics just still make me roll my eyes from time to time. For every Saks Fifth Avenue, there's an Afraid of Water. As of now, I have this album at a seven. My standout is Black Anime because how could it not be? How did you feel about it? <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. Uh, this album is a journey, bro, through some funk, some soul, even a little bit of jazz sprinkled in there. It mm-hmm. actually did fully captivate me. This album, like, I, I, did, I was engaged in it every time I listened to it. He's a great ba- brass player. <laughs> yeah, uh, that sax solo in Black Anime is fucking great. The lyrical content throughout the throughout the the album besides a little bit of the cheese was good uh Mm -hmm. the song writing is very good outside of the interpolations like you said and uh i think the instrumentation is all there man i did really like this album it's uh it's it was good i also gave it a seven but my standout is remembering sundays interesting i i for sure thought is that hmm I thought yours was either going to be black anime or there was another brass heavy one near the end that I thought might be yours. That's an interesting standout for you. I like that. I liked it. It's a really good song. Yeah. Um. All right, man. Let's move on to this new one from Can't Swim. Thanks, but no thanks. I know you've really been looking forward to this one. Did it live up to your expectations? Yeah, man. Poppy, punky, emo music will never get old to me. And this album is a perfect example of how it's done well. Uh, there's tons of fun to be had here. A few seamless transitions and a band that doesn't take themselves too seriously is just a recipe for success. And I think they're, think they're getting there, man. Uh, there's no wonder this band broke out of the super underground. Uh, nowhere. Ohio is a great track. Can you help me has just an incredible melody. Me versus me versus all y'all is obviously a standout track on the album. What a three song run to open this record up, man. Uh, at just under 30 minutes, it's the perfect length for a pop punk album. This was a lot of fun, man. My standout uh, is either me versus me versus all y'all or your paradox on Paradigm, and I gave it an eight. <laughs> what did you think about it? I liked it, man. You said it about Drug Church earlier, but it definitely falls into that too poppy for the heavy crowd, too heavy for the poppy crowd area of the rock yep. genre. But I think that their brand of alternative pop punk has a lot of charm to it. I don't have a lot of thoughts on this album beyond that. I'm going to give it a seven. My standouts are me versus me versus all y'all. And even my anger has issues. I thought both (laughs) those songs were excellent. Nice, man. All right, man. Let's cap this week off by talking about this new fucking masterpiece by Hawkin (laughs) called Fauna. Dear God, man. I want to hear your thoughts first. All right. So... Prog albums like this always take me like a few listens and like a few readings of the lyrics to have it like all settle in. Uh, this album is no different, obviously, because of it's fucking dense. It is dense lyrically. It's dense in time signatures. It's dense in themes. And I'm going to be sitting with this one for a while. Uh, Taurus starts, starts this album off strong with like immediate time signature fuckery and like themes of new beginnings. It's really an apt way to start an album. Nightingale is one of those prog tracks that you can like listen to only one instrument at a time and find something new that's happening every time you listen to it. The bass lines on this one are just insane. The drumming is tight. The themes of poetry writing and that synth solo with all the drum work like halfway through was just fucking sick. Uh, I, I, I love how I love how a lot of their tracks just kind of like unravel at the mm-hmm. end. Um, yeah. Obviously, we covered Alphabet of Me uh, during the rollout, but holy shit, man, it hits perfectly as the third track on this album. And then we really start to like dig into some of the deep cuts. And that's where this album shines. It's deep cuts, man. Semp yep. Eternal Beings is one of my favorite type of prog songs. Very slowly and subtly gets heavier and heavier as it moves. Beneath the White Rainbow is a fucking 
epic song the building the breaks the the nine i tried to count them i probably failed i think there's nine time time signature changes uh <laughs> the chaos turning to like structure are all just amazing man overall dude this album is insane and there's really no way within a week to like fully digest it there's so much density and subtlety to it that i'll need to spend some more time with it i really did enjoy my time with it this week though and i'll be listening throughout the year most definitely um off my first five listens i'm going to give it a nine my standout was uh beneath the white rainbow because yeah bro we are on the exact same page man (laughs) this album kicks ass it's proggy and technical it isn't afraid to go over the top when it needs to the singles we discussed all set the tone for what was to come but there's nothing that could really prepare you to hear a track like Sempaternal Beans or Beneath the White Rainbow or right. Elephant Never Forgets for the First Time, man. There's not a hit or there's not a miss on this album. The only limit to enjoying it is how much you enjoy this type of music. It's usually not my thing, but this album broke through to me in a way that most like it do not. I fucking I'm going to give it. it a yeah, I'm going to stay with you, man. I'm going to give it a nine. My standouts are that three song run of some paternal beans beneath the white rainbow and island in the clouds. But specifically that part in the middle of Beneath the White Rainbow, you know the part I'm talking about. Yeah, man. <laughs> it's uh, it's also a candidate and probably front runner for album artwork of the year. So which good. I think we should say uh, this one, this one kicked ass, man. Definitely lived up to expectations and probably beyond. I cannot describe how happy I was when you texted me a photo of you listening to Beneath the White Rainbow. I was like, oh, yes, he's digging it. <laughs> Dude, so good. So good. I've had this one on my mind all week. Even though Caliuchus is clearly my my album of the the week and probably of the year, uh, this one really, really, really did it for me too. Yep. Oh man. That was, this is a fun week, dude. Lots of lots of high ratings for both of us. Yeah, man. No duds. Can't ask for more than that. You wanna know what we're gonna be talking about next week? I sure do. All right. So Join us again next week when we will be breaking down new albums from Meet Me at the Altar, Miley Cyrus, Periphery, Story of the Year, and Suicide Silence. I'm already looking forward to that one. (laughs) If you want to keep up with what we'll be covering each week, follow along with our weekly rotating playlist on Spotify. You can find that in the show notes below. You can also find us on Instagram and Reddit. Just search Brandon's Face Pod. Anything you want to say before we get out of here? No, I think that's it, my man. All right. We'll see you all next week. Peace. Peace.